Okay, so this is a film that I was really excited about when I found the trailer online for a couple of reasons. Um, I've mentioned this several times on this show, but um, this film kind of combines a lot of things I am just a big fan of. First of all, I love mysteries, and I love fun mysteries. I love the Columbos, the Death in Paradises, yes, even the murder she wrote. I'm not into grim and grisly, gory mysteries. I want a fun detective solving a quirky crime, you know, Miss Fisher's murder mysteries, you know, that kind of thing. I, I love that stuff. British mysteries also are just phenomenal. Just the, that classy, you know, witty repartee. They're just... I love them. My family loves them. They're, they're our bread and butter. Love it. And I'm also, as we've also discussed, a fan of classic Hollywood. And detective films were the easy cash cows of the Hollywood studio system way back in the 30s and 40s. And you had big screen detectives like The Thin Man and Charlie Chan and Miss Marple who had all these great cinematic adventures. And I, I have loved that in the last couple years... Um, between uh, Knives Out, which is getting its sequel, it's currently being filmed at the moment, uh, the Kenneth Branagh Poirot films, which I plan to see the second one uh, here this weekend, and uh, films like this, it feels like big screen detectives are making a comeback. Uh, and I, 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 I'm really happy about that. Yes, we get a lot of them on TV, but I, I don't know. There's something about a detective on the screen, on the silver screen, the cinema, which is just, I don't know. I just, I love it. It's kind of like a Western. You don't get many of them anymore. And when they do happen, you know, you're, you're just so excited. So I found this trailer and I was very, very excited for the movie because another, you know, great, another, another quirky, fun detective that may get a series. And after watching the film, I'm not disappointed. I I enjoyed the movie, and I, I think I need to prefer that, because as I was running this over in my head, as I tend to do before I come out and do the review proper, you know, I was running through all the things I kind of want to say, and it feels like I'm going to talk a lot of negative, that I'm just going to be talking a lot of shit about this movie, and I don't want that to be the impression that I leave everyone with because I actually did enjoy this movie. This movie was exactly what I wanted it to be. It was a, a fun little romp with some interesting, delightful characters played by actors who are clearly having a blast and characters that I feel like I'd want to be around longer. So I'll probably hit those points again as we go, but I want to stress that at the beginning, I did enjoy this movie. However, I feel there are some issues with it that prevent it from reaching its full potential. So we're going to talk all about that. So first of all, before we get going, what is the movie about? So uh, in this uh, film, which I'm assuming they are thinking was going to be the first of a film series, I don't know, but I, I have that heavy indication based on uh, some of the choices they made here. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, but anyway, we're introduced to our detective character, uh, Liz Willoughby, Willoughby uh, who is orphaned at a young age. Her parents were both killed, and they never say kind of how they died or what the circumstances surrounding the death were. And she is now going to be raised by her dad's old military buddy, um, Robert, who uh, in the film proper will be played by Kelsey Grammer. And they do this whole flashback thing at the beginning, kind of introducing us to these two characters, introducing us to their budding relationship as a, as a new parental mentor figure and a young child. Uh, he's te she already has a very active mind, but he's teaching her how to hone it, how to think ahead, uh, how to defend herself. So the first part of this is like Batman Begins, just really, really condensed with a, you know, a lot of manners and British people and a guy pretending to be Kelsey Grammer, who even though he's not British, kind of gives you the feeling he should be British, you know, uh, kind of like David Ogden Stiers. And so that's kind of like the first maybe 15, 20 minutes. 
Then we get into the film proper where our Miss, uh, Miss Willoughby, played by Natalie Cox, is a respected professor. She's also a published author. She is a renowned amateur detective. And some old friends of her asked her to come investigate their bookshop because the, the owner of the shop believes it is being haunted by the ghost of her dead father. And so um, Miss Willoughby and Robert are now drawn into this thing as they're two people of logic and they're now asked to start looking at things from a more skeptical angle. But as the evidence mounts that there really is something supernatural going on, little clues start to lead Miss Willoughby to believe there's actually uh, a much more human explanation. You know, it's, it's a standard, standard mystery. So let's talk about, first off, what really works about this movie. Uh, for, what works about this movie, quite simply, are our two main actors, are Natalie Cox and Kelsey Grammer as Miss Willoughby and Robert. These two are sensational together. One of the, again, one of the things I love about these types of shows or films are detective characters that you want to be around, that you love for their quirks, for their personality. I mean, that's, that's why people love Columbo. That's why I love Columbo. And I think you've got to have a nice detective pairing if you're doing a, a dual act like this to make it work. There needs to be a fun dynamic and the two characters need to complement each other, and they really do. I love the the surrogate father, um, uncle kind of personality that uh, Kelsey Grammer's character has. I love that Natalie Cox's character is, it, she reminds me kind of of a less flamboyant Miss Fisher, and I love Miss Fisher's murder mysteries, love them. Uh, and so she kind of has that same confidence and she knows she's smart. She knows she's brilliant. Uh, but it never comes off as a cockiness or a, uh, a character flaw. It's more of a just, just the way she is and the way she carries herself. You got to give a lot of shout out to Natalie Cox, who is a, not a newcomer by any means, but never really, from what I can tell from her IMDb page, never really has given a chance to really carry an entire film on her own. And I think she does a really nice job here. The character is fun and warm and brilliant, but tough and resolute. And Kelsey Grammer is an outstanding balance. Whatever you think of Kelsey Grammer personally, the characters, he, when he's at his best acting, they are these intellectual yet warm uh, characters, much like Frasier was. And while this character isn't Frasier, there are Frasier-esque elements to him, which has always been Kelsey Grammer's strong suit. And it is very clear to me watching this movie that these two actors not only are loving the the characters they're playing, but they are really having a good time playing it with each other. At least that's the impression I get. If it comes out later that they hated each other, it's going to be I'm going to be even more impressed by their acting. Because to me it looks like they are just having a ball and some of the best scenes are the scenes with them just discussing either the case or discussing nothing at all. It it just, when they're on the screen and they're working uh, together, they are masterful. These are characters, if they wanted to start a film series with this, then they, they picked two characters I want to see again and two actors I want to see work together again. So you've, you've, you've succeeded in that. I also think the mystery itself and the style in which it's told is very fascinating. As I've said, kind of the whole setup for this is, again, uh, these two people of reason and logic and, you know, facts now having to accept the fact that there might be something outside of logical explanation. And I like that they demonstrate that Miss Willoughby especially is taken in by the possibility that there is actually a ghost. But she never lets that completely cloud her judgment. When she solves the mystery, it's the little clues that she notices along the way. So she keeps an open mind, but she is still planted firmly in the logic camp. 
So I thought that was a clever way to tell the story. I don't think the mystery itself is that complex, but I like the way they kind of illustrate how it is challenging her perceptions, but she is still the person that she has always been. So I, I do like that. I think uh, character-wise, that worked very well, and I, I did like the little the little things she picked up on that solved the mystery. So there's a lot of good here, but let's. I have to talk about though where I feel this film did not quite clear the hurdle, because um, I think the the major issue I have. I don't even want to say a problem, but the major issue I have with this movie is that I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a movie or is this supposed to be a pilot for something you'd see on the Hallmark Channel, which is not a knock. The Hallmark mysteries are a lot of fun, if not, you know, really that interesting, but they are fun. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure what this is supposed to be. Let me give you, let me give you an example. So, a couple examples. So, as I mentioned, the first 10, 15 minutes of this movie is all about the origin story, like really setting up that, uh, you know, uh, Miss Willoughby's and Robert's relationship, where they came from, how he nurtured her, the kind of person she is. It's real, like I say, it's Batman Begins condensed into like a 20 minute segment. But when we meet her after the flashback and we're going to the mystery, She's already an established everything. This film constantly gives you the feeling like this is the third or fourth movie in a series because she's already an, uh, a writer, and they never say what she writes, but I assume it's uh, it's kind of write-ups of her cases. They, they already established that she's a respected amateur detective. She already has relationships with the police who are one of the main police detectives comes in halfway through and they're like, oh, hi, whatever his name is. He's like, oh, hi, it's you two again. I hope you're not getting into any more mischief. And it's like, did we, did we miss something? Clearly we missed something. Now, I understand the premise of skipping an origin story to get right to the meat of it. Like, I understand when the Tom Holland Spider-Man uh, Homecoming decided we're not going to go through the spider bite, the discovery of powers, we're not going to do all that, that's been done, everybody knows Spider-Man, everybody knows his gig, so we can just imply it and jump right into our story. So I'm not saying that there isn't a place for that, but the thing is, with Spider-Man, Spider-Man is an established character with a heavy pop culture legacy. Nobody knows who Miss Willoughby is. I looked to see if she was a, a star of a book series or anything, and no, as far as I can tell, this movie is it. This is our first introduction. There was another thing on an IMDb that, that's just called Miss Willoughby, which also was set to star Natalie Cox, but I couldn't find any information on that. Was that supposed to be the first film in the sequel it, or series? Is it a next one that they're doing? You know, what's, what's the deal here? I get the feeling it wasn't a an abandoned first attempt at this movie. So, this is our first introduction to the character, so why are we not seeing her first case? Why is this not her first case? Again, even if you were doing it as a as a television series, I could understand kind of jumping the gun because you're going to have more mysteries. You're going to be guaranteed more mysteries down the road. But here, for all intents and purposes, this this could potentially be our one and only introduction to this character. So why are we not seeing her in her first case, cutting her teeth, as it were? And okay, so let's say you don't want to tell the story of her first case. Well, I feel like this film never quite breaks out of its made-for-TV feeling origins. I don't know if that's what it was meant to be, but it definitely feels like it's a television show that got blown up to a feature film because they don't really handle anything of any great importance. You're doing a movie. You're doing a film of a, a mystery, okay? 
So that means the mystery has to be really big or really glitzy. You know, something you can say about, and I haven't seen the second one yet, but let's just use Kenneth Branagh's Murder on the Orient Express from a few years ago. Okay, this is really big. It is really glitzy. It's directed very, uh, very showy. The cast is gorgeous. It's really put, you know, setting off all the fireworks to draw attention to itself. This film doesn't do that. And obviously it doesn't have the budget to do it, but you can do that in other ways. Okay, let's look at another film that this kind of reminds me of. Uh, Nancy Drew and the Mystery of the Hidden Staircase from a few years ago, a film I really loved and was, and I'm still upset that we never got future, uh, future entries in that series. So that film, smaller budget, much like this one, much more of a made-for-TV feel, like this one, but that one said, okay, we are going to take this opportunity, and we are going to establish our take on Nancy Drew, we're going to establish her world, her characters, her relationships, it's going to serve as a fresh introduction to the character. This film doesn't do that. And it feels like there are moments when they are planting the seeds for something bigger, but it never materializes. For instance, there's this whole scene uh, early on in the film with uh, Ms. Willoughby and Robert where she's saying to him, you know, I'm an adult now. You don't have to stay here with me. You can go and you can go live your life. You can, you're still, you know, uh, you're still healthy. You can go do whatever you want. You don't have to stay here with me if you don't want to, but I want to. Okay, so it feels like that was supposed to be setting the stage for a potential breakup of the family, which would have been an interesting thing to kind of propel her through this, this larger mystery where a friend is supposedly being haunted by her dead father. So now her surrogate father would be planning to leave. So that would be something big. It doesn't always have to be big, flashy casting and you know showy directing. It can just be big in terms of the story and the emotion. They set up, as I mentioned, with the story itself that this is about a, a woman of logic and education having to kind of broaden her horizons and take in information that maybe she's deemed silly before. Okay, so you kind of, so are we doing an Agent Scully um, Beyond the Sea X-Files episode here where the trauma of losing her own parents is uh, skewing her vision and really making her question what's going on. It seems like that's what they're trying to set up. They do have a little scene with her uh, kind of explaining that, you know, if this ghost is real, then why haven't her parents ever come to visit her? Kind of setting up a little bit of a motivation. But again, it's kind of a throwaway line and it never comes back. So there are, there were things set up, seeds that were planted to make this film feel more like an introduction and more like a bigger moment in these characters' lives, but it never, never happened. You know, screenwriting 101, playwriting 101, one of the very first things I learned from the first playwriting class I took is, is this the most interesting day of your character's life? And if it's not, why aren't we watching that? This film does not feel like this was the most important day in our character's life. This is not her first case that sets down the rest of her, her path. This is not her world changing. This is not really her even accepting new viewpoints. It's just kind of all... I don't know. It, it, again, it feels like this is supposed to be a pilot for a series that maybe might delve into some of these things later, or maybe uh, they were planning additional films that might expand on some of these. But you can't guarantee that with a movie like this. So you kind of have to shoot, shoot for the moon and, you know, hope you hit it. And I feel like I don't know. It, it feels a little too safe and too uh, calm 
for me. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of something. I don't know, but something from this film. Now I'm complaining a lot. I'm, 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 and it is a glaring issue with the movie. But the simple fact of the matter is, is that I still really enjoyed the movie. You know, even though it there's something that you know this this issue as I've talked about that keeps me from truly loving it. It was still pretty much what I wanted it to be. I got two wonderful, well-written, very interesting characters with a fun dynamic played by two actors who are clearly having a ball doing what they're doing. And a fun little mystery. I feel it could have been more. I think that's what I'm what I, what's what's kind of nagging at me a little bit is I feel like this film could have been more, but you know, uh, for what it is, it's a fun film. And if you're like me, you're a, a fan of big screen detectives or Miss Fisher's murder mysteries or even the Hallmark mysteries and movies, uh, I think you'll enjoy this one. It's quaint, it's warm, it's lacking a little bit of this or that, but on the whole, I, I turned it off going, you know, that was fun and I really hope, I never, I very rarely get my wish with this. I've gotten it with Kenneth Branagh and I'll get it with Knives Out, but I didn't get my wish with uh, Nancy Drew. Um, but I do wish that uh, this film would get enough of an audience that it would uh, warrant a sequel. I would like to see these characters back and I'd like to spend more time with them because they're fun. So there it is. That's uh, that's my review. It's a, it's a harder film to track down and it's on YouTube. So I... I wholeheartedly say it's worth the time and the five bucks. So, there it is. Uh, final grade for this one. Uh, I'm going a B minus on it. And if, I, if this was any other set of performances, that grade probably would have slipped down to a C. I'll be completely honest here. The performances and the two main characters save this movie. Just the love the characters have for each other, their warmth, their chemistry... It lifts the movie up past where it would have been. Any other film, any other performances probably would have garnered a C rating. But I'm going to B- minus on this one. Enjoyable. Uh, track it down on a rainy night and uh, just have fun with a cozy mystery. All right, so there we have it. So uh, always glad to check out these lesser known films um, and hopefully maybe garner some attention towards them. But we are not done with Mystery Weekend. Oh, heavens no. We still have a big mystery to come, and I am planning to get to that later today. So, uh, thank you all for joining me. Please come back and join us again. And as always, drive safe, and I will see you at the movies.